All right. <clears throat> Live. Finishing setting up. I'm a few minutes late, so let's mention it on Twitter. Cool, everything's set up. <sighs> Today was a long day of reading controversial opinions, because Twitter. And let's see if this time we can actually get some uh, actual AGE work done. Now, uh, in the last episode, uh, we ended up just working on Xcrypto, which is uh, <laughs> disturbingly close to my job. Uh, <laughs> so instead, so I finished it uh, over the week. Um, I still need permission by Dimitri. If we don't get that, we might just re-implement uh, PBKDF. Um, but I finished implementing the um, extraction of the public key, uh, which was extremely easy. Like, where is that? Uh... Wait, is this the last patch set? Yeah, it is. Uh. Oh, here. Um, this is what we had left uh, to do the other time. Uh, if the decryption fails um, with a passphrase needed error, then just parse the public key from the public key field and set the public key uh, field of the error so that when the error returns it delivers the public key within the error which i find i find a kind of nifty api i'm really happy about it now uh cool We need a place where to stick this branch so that it will be accessible by a replace directive where do we stick this branch? Uh, I have a Go repository that I use for all sorts of crap, and this is the crypto repository, not the Go repository, but you know what? Eh, it's the same. So we just... Uh, Nope. 
it's pretty important that we can't use a replace directive as things are right now because this is just a CL and anybody could make a CL. And if this allowed you to reference the commit directly through the crypto repository, it would be bad. Like, actually, it's so bad that I want to check that it doesn't work. Um, one thing at a time. Because it means that people could uh, submit a CL or obtain a commit uh, message that lives in that repository and then make a PR to somebody else being, hey, you should update your X crypto. Uh, here, this version is more recent. And actually, it's what they submitted as a CL and nobody reviewed or uh, something that they submitted intentionally for that attack. Now, uh, let's see, crypto. Uh, let's check out this. CL. Yep. Um. From here, we. Where were we? Oh, first, I want to check that we can't actually reach it from outside. So let's go back to AG and try to say, hey, go get. Get me golang.org slash x slash crypto at this comment, which is totally not mainline. And if this works, you're gonna uh, see me freak out. Excellent! Oh, well, yeah, but that's because the proxy was in the middle. But also, I guess that means that the proxy tried to fetch it. But we can also just uh, go proxy equal direct and retry. Unknown revision. Fantastic. Now let's push to git at github.com philosophile go uh, and we will push it as branch. Um, well, we push head to uh, let's call it crypto slash. Um, uh, open SSH keys. Uh, this should work. Okay. Prefs heads, which is the full name of a uh, branch. Cool. This is now a Franken repository, but let's not worry about that. Now, I don't actually know how to do a replace directive with goget. Uh, oh, there's a flag. Is this how one uses a replace directive? Okay, nope. Uh, this is actually a go mod. Edit, I suppose. Uh, 
That was too quick. Right, because go mod edit just edits the go mod file. Well, go mod tidy and let's see where that brings us. Okay, that's good. Now it should find it because this one instead has a branch with its name. It did. Cool. Interesting. How did we lose the gopal stuff? Why did we have the gopal stuff? Do I have the tools trick? No. Then I'm not sure why I had that. Very well. Oh, right. It, it was not version, for example. So it was just something I had run. Um, sweet. So now we replaced the uh, Golang Gorgex crypto with the stuff that has uh that has the um, the changes we made um from the chat uh, uh like why tidy removes indirect entries so finally i think i have a mental model for why it happens and a gomod tidy builds the tree of the imports of your packages and you know indirect dependencies and actually matches that with the things you it's tidying up it's why we keep a file that actually imports things that we want to um, um, to keep in the go mod the point is not that it was an indirect it's that it was a unused uh, dependency um, there was no code that used it anymore and of course, for tools, that's kind of annoying, and it's why you, we make those, you know, files with a build tag that disables them just to have the imports in them. But, yeah. And then you would be tempted to use the ignore uh, build tag, but that's actually ignored by uh, Gomod Tidy. So, eh. The tools uh, story is... Uh, the tools versioning story is not fantastic, but I kind of like how we ended up doing it in Mixer. Um, where basically I do this, um, uh, I actually have a file that I run with all my analysis in it, and so there are actually all dependencies of actual code. I don't know if you folks could hear that, but that's a, a cruise ship. Okay. Uh, so now we have a dependency that, that has the things we added. Now, the hard part, actually remembering what the hell we built this for. Um, and what are we doing next? Oh, we were doing um, password uh, um, protected uh, key, uh, key files, uh, SSH files and now we have support for them in X crypto this one uh, so now that we have support in X crypto we can what is this yeah. um We can actually implement them in the uh, AGE command. How is the implementation of such a thing? I think it can be completely transparent to the actual AGE API. The actual AGE API just takes identities. And an identity is just Hmm. Right, an identity has just a type, 
And uh, Unwrap? I kind of hate Unwrap. That's a name. I'm, I'm sure I picked it, but... Sure. Um, it has um, a type and uh, uh, Unwrap method. Now, it would be nice if it could match on more than just the type. Because when we call Ag the crypt, it just goes into a loop over the recipients. Why is there a new line here? Um, and for each identity, it will check if the type matches, and if the type matches, try to, um, to decrypt it. And if it succeeds, cool, it's done, and it's the end. Now, it would be nice if we could also specify a public key so that well if it knew its own public key so that it can know if that key is going to work because then we can make it so unwrap actually asks for the password and that way when we try yeah yeah that way when we try to uh, to decrypt um Yeah, when we try to de decrypt um, something with an, enc uh, an encrypted uh, private key configured, uh, we don't have to provide the passphrase immediately. Uh, instead, we can just mm, provide the um, provide it when we're sure it's needed. And this is why in the AG format. under SSH keys we have this the encoding of the first four bytes of the SSH uh, key fingerprint a general way to do it I th on the AG internal side uh, I think is to just do an interface upgrade for supports before unwrap, which passes the same thing, passes a, a recipient. Uh. Um. Which will have type, args, and, bo and body, and the thing can just check by itself if it um, if it supports it. So we can write then in the comment uh, package a little wrapper that will look at the public key, compare it with the uh, look at the fingerprint uh, hash, uh, compare it with the public key, and return a boolean based on that. So let's do that. Uh, we'll need to define that interface. Uh, oh God, how do we call this? Um, supporter. God, I hate it. Uh, something identity. Uh, known identity.
When you don't know how to pick a short name, well, I guess pick a long one. Self-aware identity. Um, we'll think about it. And this is all we need uh, as support on the Atrolag internals. Um, it will not call unwrap if it finds that it supports uh, a method called uh, uh, supports and passes the, the block. And if the identity itself says, hey, no, I can't decrypt that, moving on. Cool. Now the question is where to implement this uh, stuff because I think all the SSH stuff used to be used to be implemented in here. Yeah, it is. Wrap and unwrap are here. Yes, yes, this is me. <laughs> we had replaced this hmm. well um, I'll go back to replace it nice to see when your deprecations actually trickle down so this is unwrap the identity And it's done based just on a, a to fn and team private key, which is not what we have if the key is encrypted, though. So where should the password wrapper live? Where does it make sense for it to live? Well, since this is lower level, it takes directly the private key itself. And it sounds like we can write it in a way that is completely agnostic to this all. Um, as long as the... Yeah, it's always the second argument. Yeah, for now, let's have it live in common age. I don't see how it would be a useful exported API. Um, maybe ssh.go, uh, ssh keys. Keys. Okay, so what we're building is an implementation of an identity which takes an encrypt. 
encrypted. Okay, so type um, encrypted identity, which will need to have a pub key. No. What? Um, we'll need a pub key, uh, we'll need a place for the decrypted identity. And we'll need... Oh, a place for the actual um, encrypted blob. So... Uh, what form does a encrypted blob take? Uh, SSH dot parse. Row private key with passphrase. This one that would be pen bytes. That we are sure that. It's an AG identity, which for now it definitely is not. Oh, and it needs to know its own type, I suppose. Eh, probably public key has a type thing. Yes, it does. And it's exactly the same type names we used. Isn't that convenient? If we already decrypted the key, it's just a matter of returning um, We just have to call Pass the call to the decrypted thing And otherwise, this is the part where we actually have To decrypt the, the thing Because if we reach this point, it means that the support call passed but first let's use the support uh, make the support call also this is the part where i probably should start writing tests because i was thinking yeah like i'm going to test this manually by just running it with different keys and that's not good but uh testing command line tools is so annoying Uh, 
have so let's go with let's implement supports first, then we'll think about it. Then for support we check that the block has at least uh, another argument. I'm sure we're already doing it here. This should have already been checked uh, upstream, but why not double check it? There we go, that's it. We are taking the SHA-256 of our public key, making a sum and checking that the first four bytes are equal to the hash uh, in the message. Now this will inform the mm, loop in the internal implementation of Agate here, where it will check that it supports the thing before asking for the uh, for the public key and that should all work out hmm also to make it more testable let's uh, make the passphrase a callback So this should be fairly easy to implement. Small incremental steps and APIs that fit together. Seems like it's a theme of these streams. Mm.
Now this returns just the raw private key, right? Yeah, literally the private key types it returns. Okay, perfect. Because then we can just lap those into Uh, actually, we have to extract this, which is kind of unfortunate. there that calls this interesting I think this might just be a gopples imitation yeah it sounds like the right um, Abstraction here was not at this level, but at this level. Let's move this into the color. Actually, for now, let's just drop this whole thing. It feels like the wrong abstraction. Is there another one for the recipient? No, which also suggests it was the wrong abstraction. Oh no, there it is. Sounds like they should both cut out this part and instead take a uh, SSH public key for this. Eh, they're just helpers. Let's let helpers be helpers. We can just do a little extra work in here for now. Wait, why does it return a pointer to an add to five and empty infinite key? Huh. That's weird. That's really weird, probably too late to change it, but really weird. Yeah, weird. That's so be it. Um,
we save this and then just return again. Now wrap the default clause. It just returns an error saying unsupported. Which in theory we should never reach because this will get checked and we'll check that beforehand, but you know. of error could this ever return? None. Oops. Okay, so this should do it. Um, now, the hard part is, of course, implementing passphrase. Uh, but, you know, it's just a matter of asking for it on the terminal. And we also have to populate pubkey correctly and uh, based on uh, um, either on the returned uh, value in the error when we do the uh, attempt at decryption or based on the um, um, .pub file if we find one. And what do we do if we don't find a pub file and it's encrypted with the old stuff? Uh, I think we just throw an error and tell people to just, maybe just a warning. No, no, we, we asked for the passphrase and just decrypt it right, right away. Uh, I don't want to write that code because it's basically like re-implementing this. Uh, from the chat, there's a way to reconstruct the .pub. Well, no, not without the mm, passphrase unless it's an OpenSSH um, key. If it's an OpenSSH key, it contains the public key in plain text next to the encrypted private key. Otherwise, it's just a blob of uh, uh, encrypted um, pen. So you're just staring at an encrypted blob um, until you ask for the passphrase but I kind of don't want to ask for the passphrase right away. Uh, we could just always return supports true in that case and then let it ask for the passphrase when it actually finds that at least it needs that type, but no, we don't even know the type. Oh yeah, we could just present an error saying, hey, yeah, run this and get the pub file uh, in place. Yeah, fuck it, let's not take a um, uh, complexity for an edge case of a legacy uh, format. Um, I truly have no idea how I'm gonna test this stuff because I could easily test just this file by, you know, providing passphrase as a callback that saves state about the test. But 
this is 70 lines it's not that worth testing what's worth testing is all the stuff we're discussing now what if there is a pub file what there isn't um this will probably be something like the common go test suite uh, need to make a scripting language that says stuff like generate this file and this file and uh, and then try doing this and that and check that it, the output does this and that. There must be a framework for this, right? For testing command line tools. Anybody? I think dash y just reads the public key part of an uh, unencrypted. Um, well, we can test it. it. It would be silly for it to only work with that format, so. That did not help me. Um, yeah, it works. Cool. No, perfect. Thank you. Basically, it's this. Neat. Although it would be even cooler if we could get it to convert uh, to the OpenSSH key format. That's not what OpenSSH format means. This might be it. This is it, but unencrypted? Why unencrypted?
maybe just dash p and dash t. No, not T, uh, M. I don't see dash O in this man page. Yeah, that worked. Yeah, we can just tell them to run this command and it will interactively ask them uh, where is the key and change the passphrase and in the process change the format. I wonder if it goes both ways. Is neat. Okay, now let's see where we need to plug this in. Probably in parse identities file. Ah, yes, yes. This function that we were complaining was too small. Hehe. <laughs> Added. I wonder if we can put it here. Uh, does it panic if you do this? And air is new. Okay, so we can do this. Mm.
Oh, I'm such a fan of how this is coming together. Because we have them from here, perfect. And then passphrase, um, let's see. Let's make a callback. There should probably know the name. What is name for? Perfect, we have name here, which came from here, which is the name of the file, perfect. Um, There is a thing for it. Um, loading so I guess we're just uh, terminal dot read password we're just searching it on github oh yeah I'm not figuring out how to actually use this Sure, go crypto fast, why not? What is this? Maybe we should check if it's a terminal, but nah, like we only support uh, interactive passphrase use anyway, so. Uh, let's use the same language. There we go. Putting together pieces and everything comes out pretty clean. Um, except in the if the public key does not have um, it's not already embedded in the error message, now we have to read the dot pub file <sighs> sure
the file name is already embedded in the in here. Yeah, we could special case is not exist, or we could just say if we can't open it, nah, that's the right time to tell the user what they are supposed uh, to be doing. Ah, yes. Thank you. Yeah, pretty happy with us. Yeah, that's probably a uh, multi-line error message. It's probably better. You're right.
Eh, I think this might actually look look good. Uh, because it's a call to action. Let's try it out. Mm. Also because this might just work. Again, I love when these things that I really didn't want to build, I break them down into smaller pieces, uh, like the fast first prompt and the encrypt SSH identity wrapper, etc. Et and then at some point you just don't notice it and you, you're done. I think this is... Yeah, huh. So let's try uh, Did we implement recipient files? We did not, did we? Nope. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to need This one. Uh. Ah. Yeah, too much indent. In fact, with four tabs, I don't think it's too much indent, but yeah. I don't know, I like that we print the error, whatever it is. I always kind of never liked the uh, is not exist. Uh, always felt a bold, like a bold assumption. I'm sure that it's correct 99% of the time. But I don't know, I feel like we can print the real error and then just try to be helpful afterwards. Ooh. Interesting. Oh. Ah, no. Parse public key is not it. We're not using it anywhere else, right? Yeah.
Yep, exactly how we are using it here. That's unexpected. Also, this is wrong. Oh, interesting. Oh, I see. Uh, we, we can make that error message a little clearer. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that Is this a little clearer? Like the problem is that we didn't find the public key, but you can solve it by converting the private key. Also, I like multi-line, but maybe it's a little too much here. Access status one will also not be there, by the way. Yeah, good enough for now. Um, What is happening here? Maybe it doesn't work through go run. Hmm. Huh. Part of the problem here is that we're not printing errors because we don't know if this was supposed to work or not. So we should probably make this a little more complex and do this. Right, but from here we can only return an error, we can't print a warning. Uh, like essentially, if we said, sub, if sub, we know that it's supposed to be supported, 
and Rap returning an error is bad news. If instead we don't know if it's supported, we just try unwrapping and it's unwrap itself that tells us if um, if it's supposed to work. No, we are not adding verbose mode. No, we are deciding for the user what's good, what's bad. The problem is just that this is a API while the common line is maybe do all unwrap operations trivially know whether they also support it? No, because the X25519 one just has to literally do the crypto and try to decrypt the thing, right? Yeah. We could return a specific type of error for unsupported key. Yes. We should return a specific error when we think we don't support the key. And otherwise, errors from unwrap are fatal. Yeah, I think I like that. Would be a little better the other way around, but me. Eh. Uh, but also supports is the wrong name. Um, it's not that it supports it, it's that it matches it, right? And identity matcher is a much better name. Yeah, incorrect identity error. I think it can even be a variable for now. it's not too long and then bundled up okay now with this we should be able yeah it is wrapping an error but once you know from the internals that the actual meaning of that error is that it's the incorrect key does it actually matter like how you found out now let's see here. It's a bit annoying because now we have to go 
one by one for, at all the unwrap implementations. Right, so we can replace this one because if the block type is not the same, eh, might as well. Everything else here instead would be bad. This would mean that none of them would work. This should never work, should never fail. Now this one, if this fails, the only case in which this fails is if a uh, public key is wrong. And if public key is wrong, if it's a low order point or if it's too short to be a point, in which case it's not that this is the wrong X2519 identity, it's that it's the wrong X to like the recipient is broken. Uh, this does make the for the implementation a little stricter, because it used to be the case that probably you could make invalid recipient blocks. Ooh, this is actually a interoperability question. With the current implementation, if you make a recipient block that is different. Um, it will just get silently ignored. If we do this instead, an invalid recipient block will cause failure. But you know what? That sounds good to me. If you if we change the the format of a recipient block, it should get a new name like x two five five one nine two, you know, something better. Now this is the only line that I think. Yeah, because this is completely indistinguishable. Any failure here, basically any failure. I, I don't know if it's way too short, I guess it's invalid, but anything else here is indistinguishable from having an incorrect identity. Okay, next, the script one. Now, of course, if it's not a script, everything else is validity checking. And again, Line 148 is a bug, I mean, here. Oh yeah, if we hit this, it's a bug. Uh, we should not be calling unwrap when the type is wrong. Um, but it felt like something worth um, catching. Also because later we might just not check types. No, it doesn't seem right, but well, from the point of view of the identity, it's the incorrect identity. So it's correct that it returns this error. It should never be called like that, but you can imagine something where we decide not to check the types. I don't know why. Uh, and just try them all, try all the unwraps. Um, and I feel like that should just work. Technically, it could also be a panic because in our implementation, it should never happen. But these are, are going to be exported things. And it feels like the contract of unwrap should be, it will look at the thing and if it understands it, it will try to parse it and validate it. 
and then check if it's on its own thing. And if it doesn't understand it, it will just say, yep, move along. Now, here is a good question. What about collisions? Four byte collisions. Not a thing, right? Like, that's a 32 bit collision. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Okay. And if it happens, the only consequence is that using the colliding key will cause a fatal failure instead of um, tr keep trying. Collisions are why we have this error? What do you mean? Yeah, SSHRC identity itself is not a matcher. It could be a matcher, uh, but why? When we have the private key, we can just use this code and reach this. Um, the matcher is only, uh, we're only using it for the private key one. The reason we have this error is that it's actually bad to not to surface all these other errors we were completely silently ignoring all these other errors and we shouldn't be because that probably means there's something very wrong and that needs to be fixed not you know whatever it told us here uh, error initializing decryption no identity match the recipient yeah that's that's not helpful Yeah, I feel like even if there were, if even if they were matchers, they should still return this error because by the time they get there, they know for a fact that they are not the right identity for this um, for this recipient. And then they shouldn't return it from here because by here there's a one in two to the thirty-two chance that they were they are the wrong identity. It's much more likely that something was corrupted. And now finally, let's see if we should return it here. For example, I'm tempted to return true from here just to let it um, proceed in the case in which this part is incorrect, but that's kind of weird, matches returning true when it knows it's going to fail in a wrap, so... Mm. No, but we should, because if it... Uh, That uh, one thing at a time. Um, let's see. But back here, if it fails to obtain the passphrase or it fails to decrypt it, it's not that it's the wrong identity. 
um, if the SSH key is invalid, uh, it's not that it's the wrong identity. However, if it's the wrong SSH key type, that basically, we should not let that happen. Like in parsing. This should have a new method that actually checks this. No, mm, from the chat, if I plan any compatibility between, between Naga and PGP, and no, uh, the, the PGP key servers are bad, the PGP key format is bad, uh, the everything about it. I, I know, I think, most of the RFCs, and there's nothing I want to salvage. Uh, SSH keys are fine, which is why we're using that as our interoperation point.
Mm. Oh, this is annoying. Yeah, I, I have to use um, um, P, uh, PGP, GPG with the YubiKey and yeah, you can use the YubiKey through PIV uh, for SSH without it. Um, and um, so I want Agate to eventually work with it too, so that I can use my Yubi keys directly without uh, GPG. Uh, from the chat, provide some context in that error message from read pub key. Read pub key, uh, read pub file, I imagine. And I feel like it has quite a bit. So this should be now. Yeah, I didn't add. Oh, uh, I didn't add any context here uh, because I've uh, basically delegated adding all the context to the call colleague. Um, you know, we haven't yet decided whose responsibility exactly it is. Well, it should be the colleague, but yeah. Uh, I liked some of the error handling proposals, mostly for the for the ability to um, shift the ecosystem towards reliably adding context in the colli. Like the original error plus the read error. Oh, I see, like maintaining this uh, error for context. Um, I don't think we need to because the original arrow just says, hey, this is an encrypted file. Um, so not sure we need to do that. Yeah, um, this is a pretty, like, it's a very semantic error and we're handling it instead. Oh yeah, also OpenSSH at the U2F support and yeah, I, um, I, I, I love it. And hopefully, yeah, then we can just use U2F directly to SSH into things. But, you know, before GitHub add support and everybody gets add support, that will be, that will take a while. In the meantime, I, I want to you uh, switch to just using PIV uh, with the fancy UV keys. Uh, cool, I think that this works. Um, yeah, now the part that I'm not a fan of currently is how in matcher Here. Uh, all right, I was also refactoring this. Uh, should we match the type here? No, it, it. See, this is an example of why check the type in the identity. <laughs> uh, although, to be fair, that should be a fatal error then. Uh, good point. Oops, uh, mm, rumble, grumble. So here we can switch to unexpected because we had checked earlier that it was at 5519 or RSA. Uh, also, we should capitalize them all. Uh, 
No, I think the the cleanest thing here is actually to check There we go. Now, finally, I'm super tempted to turn this to true, but I don't know how to justify it in the docs. Like, how do I write docs that justify making this true so that then it will return an error? Oh, I know. <laughs> matches actually shouldn't return that identity matcher should return an error which gets treated the same way. So then now, probably copy paste this from uh, where was this code from um, uh, I'm clearly getting tired SSH here yeah yeah right Neat, I like this. Now we did all this just to improve the buggability because there's something wrong. Oh, I didn't recompile it. Okay. Okay. 
Now first we should totally print a new line there even if it's even when it's failing. Probably. Somewhere we should have the name in the error. Uh, who has that context? Probably only the passphrase uh, thing. Oh, I'm an idiot. Look at this. We can't take the passphrase neither from standard input nor from... Oh, come on. We are using standard input. Should probably work anyway. Uh, should probably go to the TTY somehow. Slash dev slash TTY. Yeah, fine. We're opening dev TTY. You know, this might be the one place where I allow usage of globals. Because it is a global fact whether standard input is available or not. After all, globals are bad because they're singletons, except standard input is a singleton. Um. Oh, hey, we crossed 500 followers. Uh, okay. Uh, t -t 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 -t. I had this had to come at some point. Uh, encrypted keys is in command and now I feel like validated and putting it in command um, or if we fail to open standard input like that we just fall back to the TTY automatically I don't want to reverse engineer how to do this so we are going back to github search So it looks like they didn't have this problem. Um, Dominic uh, mentioning that standard input is only a single tone until you decide to run two separate instances. Um, yes, except that that would be at the internal age level, which does not even consider standard input. It takes the crypt, it takes a reader. 
so you can run multiple, uh, which is why it's a, it was probably a good decision to put the passphrase prompt in the common package main, which instead has a, a very has ownership of standard input and whether it wants it to be a um, singleton or not. No, I'm not invoking XPass. Like, I'm not invoking a pass program. We are moving on to the next. Uh... Wow, new mock terminal. That's some dedication to actually testing everything. Um... Our clone, sure. How does our clone do it? Not helpful. Well, I can use this for a moment. Hi, Brad. Uh, wow, search is useless. Why show me 15 copies of the same file? You can probably figure that out programmatically that they are the same file. They probably have the same git history. I would like to not be using third party packages. Oh, hey, hey, hey. This is. This is, sounds good. Oh, wow, literally just that. <laughs> um, okay. Sure, why not? <laughs>
Huh. Yeah. Related issue. Uh, opened by a person I recognize as the developer of our clone, which we are looking at. I just. Yep, exactly what we're doing. No, it will not work on Windows. I have no idea what to do on Windows. I'll take a patch for that, I, but I don't even have a Windows machine to test it on. But also, honestly, I don't think that on Windows uh, redirection works at all. I think you have to use dash E, dash I, and dash O. Um, because I think it breaks, uh, it's not 8-bit safe to redirect. People opened issues and their problem was that uh, they were redirecting and Windows was messing with the end of lines and stuff like that. Alright, this is a long back shot. I don't think there's anything. Also, I think that nobody owns this package. And. Lol. Yes. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, we support uh, passphrase encrypted uh, private keys. Boom. Yes, yes, I should write tests. Uh... I honestly don't know how to test this stuff. Like, how do you test TTYs? Oh boy. <sighs> I don't want to paint myself in the same corner with as a make sort is in, where I have a lot of things to go back and test. Because I only wrote like tiny unit tests that actually check nothing, but. <sighs> Oh yeah, I could just go at it like the Linux kernel does. Here's a beta, folks. I'm not sure I want to mock terminals. At least not right now. Um, cool. Um, let's make this into a comment. And... Um, Yeah, that's why I made passphrase uh, callback so that I could uh, make a different um, make it different in tests. But realistically, that only allows me to test like these lines, which hey, uh, sure, better than nothing. But it doesn't allow me to actually test the end-to-end execution of the common line. For example, it doesn't let me test the .pub file reading because that happens uh, at a higher level. 
Um, I suppose I could make a test only hook that overrides what would function to use instead of passphrase prompt. Wait, yes, that's exactly what I should do. Yes, that's that that's exactly what I should do. Okay. I will also have to figure out how to test flags, I suppose. Uh, uh Let's do some other boring bookkeeping stuff before we do this uh, boring uh, stuff. No, I don't want to write expect scripts. Maybe. Feels like a hole that it's not then easy to get yourself out of when you want some logic that the expect will not allow you. Feels like th this should be a solved problem though. So many people write command line tools in Go. So somebody must have written a nice imperative testing suite where you can write go co functions in a test and it will set up a workspace and now i actually want to write this okay well that was one way to motivate me uh, This was actually more contained a change than I was worried. Mostly a common ag change. I wish these were actually stat. Um, like get cached stat. Because this immediately tells you that yes, it's a common dagger change. wanted to make official the um, uh, what was it oh yes the um, armored file format so let's take a break to do that no. Yeah, we discussed this with uh, Strad over Signal, and we should really um, specify it in the spec. Um. However, I don't remember what we decided. <laughs> so I can't actually read Rust. The names are amusing. Um, oh, I want cookies too now. Do I have cookies? Did I have lunch? Yes, I had lunch. It's also 7 p.m., so I guess it's acceptable that I hungry again. Um,
Oh, hi. It's almost time to generate some test vectors for interoperability, isn't it? Feels like that should be a side effect of writing tests. So yes. Um, mm. uh, well, we sign, still sign the header, but we sign the normalized version of the header. I don't really see any other way to do it. Basically, we have two platforms where just the fact of storing the header will change the line endings. So we still have to sign the header but we have to do a normalization pass. I don't see any other way out. Oh, here we go. This is what we had decided. The ending tag is uh, the triple star. Because we didn't want it to be... Um, we were going to use triple dash, but triple dash is part of the base64 uh, language that we use. So if the last line was not short, it would look like the line after it of three dashes was a short line and that would be bad and for a hot moment i thought that i had fucked up the entire spec and that um this was also um ambiguous because it might be that it might be the continuation of that but in fact that's not the case because you can just check for triple dash space and triple dash space can't happen if it's the ending of a line because there would be a new line here. Um, so it's not ambiguous and it's... Well, it was never going to be ambiguous, but it was going to be a pain to parse, which instead it's not because you, for each new line you check if it starts with triple dash space, which is also how I think I implemented it. But at the very end, instead, where there's going to be just a new line at the end, you would have to do conditional checks and like look look forward and let's let's not do that. Um, somewhere here, though, it should say message. Hmm. Also, I haven't implemented seeking yet. That will be a fun coding exercise: implementing seeking over encrypted AGE files because the format is defined in such a way that it allows seeking and it was a major goal. Um, we could also just implement armored messages as we add them to the spec so everybody that's looking for go doesn't get bored. Uh, all right. I like that. Also, Strat doesn't seem to have any test vectors. <laughs> Although that's probably my fault for not generating any. Oh, there we go. This is an armored file. There we go.
Cool. Okay. Then we know what changes we need to make. We probably should invent our own uh, key encryption format that uses the AGE wrapping format, uh, but uh, one thing at a time. <laughs> you noticed the the web of trust in Comic Sans. Yeah, gee, wonder why I did that. All right. So, heading one. very much now. Yeah, I, I'm regretting using Google Docs. Actually, not true. I, Google Docs was the right thing to use to develop this spec. Um, it's now overdue.
did I ever define the line breaks? Yeah, there we go. Um, Matthew Green promised that uh, I would put all this into an RFC, so yes, I would love that. <laughs> I think this should be enough to specify the ASCII armor. Call it payload here. Binary encrypted payload, yeah. Yes, yeah, we only do header canonicalization for armored files. Uh, if it's not an armored file, you did not opt in to uh, malleability. Uh, yeah. Thanks, because I should make this explicit. <laughs> okay, now that we specify that, uh, Let's see, how hard would it be to actually implement it? I bet it's just yet another wrapper around the uh, 
stream wrapper around the... I remember that there were like 15 wrappers involved at some point. By the time we get to... Let's start with encryption, should be the easiest. So we do the header. Mm, this will probably have to grow. Uh, well, no, it can just check the header if it's a uh, armored or non-armored one. Actually, let's start there. Format header needs to grow an armor bool. Performance will be terrible because we will be decoding each line one by one. But Eh, who cares? Or at least that's the case if we copy the implementation I'm using for recipient marshalling. But we said we're starting with the header. Anyway, also, banner. Uh, By the way, um, was there any microphone problem like last time? Uh, can you hear any um, interference? Good. Very good. Hi, Dimitri. Uh, okay, so this is the part where we will have to figure out how to handle parsing. Because if it's armored, we need to strip the endings mm, intro with armor CRLF I, I would like it to be handled at a different level because also all the recipients need to be stripped of the CR um, and everywhere we're, we're using backslash n All right, let's start with marshalling, where we just gener also always generate slash ends because we don't care. We'll, it's just a matter of supporting them both. Um, Yeah, 
yeah, it will probably involve wrapping the reader, but wrapping a buff IO reader. Mm. One thing at a time. It will probably come down to making our own uh, tokenizer that reads strings or lines, our own line reader, uh, which gets initialized with whether it should be um, lenient or not. Ooh, we are in luck um, because how we check the Mac is that we do Marshall without Mac. I'm almost sure. Yeah. So we don't actually have to write the normalization stuff. We just have to make sure that the parsing does the right thing. Because once we parse it correctly, we will just reserialize it and then hmac that. So we'll be, be sure that the signature is correct for our internal state, which after all is what we're operating on. So I'm fairly okay with that, even if there is a bit of doom principle where we are parsing something before checking the hmac. But that was always going to be the case anyway, so might as well. Um, and also this is a header, I feel like if the hmac is correct for, and we have to parse it all anyway, because by the time we get to have the key for the hmac, we have done all the identity finagling stuff. So, okay, so this will actually be extremely easy. Um, the part that's hard is just the parser. Uh, normalization, we don't even have to write normalization. Um, but back to us, uh, I was trying to make first the serializer. Um, mm, right. Uh, nope. Uh, this is not going to find the colors, is it? Nope, because they are in common DAG. I'm sure that it will be an easy find. Oh no, actually they are in DAG encrypt. And the Mac is also over the first line, so it will, yeah, that's good. It will automatically authenticate it. So this is where it marshals the header. Um, the agit format is uh, support seeking a uh, question from chat. Um, yes, uh, it can totally seek. Uh, I haven't implemented um, seeking in stream.reader, but that's just my own implementation. You can totally make it seekable. Um, because the offsets are uh, predictable. You have to, you know, go back to the previous block, uh, stream block boundary, uh, but that's, that's why I'm using stream. So header dot marshal. Is 
Is it a right closer? Yes, because it needs to invoke close anyway, which is good for us because the closer can generate the three stars. Um, Now, I don't want to... What do you think? Encrypt with the armor? I don't want it to be a boolean flag. Boolean flags are gross. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, immediately after here, we wrap uh, Dest into uh, armored uh, uh, writer. Uh, now, where do I stick that? Maybe in format? Stream felt like it deserved its own package. Armor does not. Uh, but it also shouldn't be in Age. So probably in format. Hmm. Now we have the problem that... Oh.
now we have the problem that I remember thinking about and deciding not to. Uh, that close needs to close the underlying writer. Because if it doesn't... Um, or is the other way around? No, it, this is the outer one. So if this one doesn't call close on the underlying one, we will not get the three stars. But I remember thinking that it made sense for this not to do that because you could totally want this decide to add something to the to the line afterwards, right? You could say something like, oh yeah, I want to write this stream encrypted stuff to this netcom, uh, but after that, write something else, which doesn't actually make any sense. And I guess you could just add something in the middle um, to block um, the close call. Yeah, all right. Yeah, like one can use not closer if they do want to uh, prevent it, uh, but we want it to happen. So, um, yeah. yeah, 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 this sounds like the right thing. Close should propagate and yeah. Uh, we need close to propagate because when we close the um, uh, stream writer, we need the armor writer to also get closed. Otherwise, the armor writer, which is wrapped inside the um, stream writer, is inaccessible to us. And that closing just gets lost. Actually, this makes me think that every uh, closer that wraps something else or at least every every right closer that wraps a writer also needs to propagate closes um otherwise you lose track of the um of the inner one i feel like this should actually be a ecosystem contract Back to us. Uh. Uh. I 
do we want to implement uh, line breaking? Uh... Huh. Archived zip writer does dot close doesn't close the underlying writer. Hmm. Hmm. Wait, what do you mean encrypt should be the boundary where close stops? I'm not sure I get what you mean. Like the problem is that our caller will call close only once and that's for sure. And that close needs to first call close on the stream and then call close on the armor. Oh, I see. Uh, encrypt should give a knob closer or armored writer to stream. I see. Um, that makes sense so that we don't call the underlying close so that yeah, I like that. I agree. Um, so our stream package propagates closes because we need it to, but the AGE package itself does not propagate closer, uh, closes, which makes a lot of sense. Yep. Yep. And we could just at that point make stream just always take um right closer yeah i like it i really like it thank you Now, um, back to our armored rider. Hmm. Uh, what's the actual rider API? Base sixty four encoding new encoder. It'd be nicer to have something a little more efficient than Right, closer all, all closers all the way down, folks. Um. All right, at some level, we'll need to keep track of how many bytes we have written. Now, which level is that? Sounds like we are making yet another wrapper so that we can pass it in here.
Uh, does it need to also have a close method? Probably not, right? Uh, every time it reaches the end of the line, it inserts a new line. And if you then call close, then nothing else gets written. No, 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 no. If it reaches the end of the line, it doesn't write a new line. So that you're always guaranteed that you can add a new line after this is done. Uh. Hey, Anthony. We implemented the um, uh, uh, encrypted private keys and now we are doing uh, armor um, encoding. Um. Oh, we already had that, don't we? Yep. Sanity check if written is zero, zero percent. This is zero. Bytes line minus zero is zero. Remaining in line is equal to bytes per line as we expected, but written. So we have to add the check here. That sounds about right. And we don't 
subtract these because they're not part of the stuff we wrote from P. This will need tests. Um, I don't know, should we? I feel like here is one of the rare cases where a write error does not have to be permanent at this layer. It will definitely be permanent at the next layer, who cares, but... Um, just do this This might just work like this, because every time it starts, it will consider adding a new line, but only because it's starting before, yeah, len p, because there's still something to write, and it will not do it at the very beginning. And then everything else will just write it and keep track that it wrote it, shorten p. That should work. <laughs> yeah, returning minus one would be... Nah, no, I'm fairly... Yeah, no, 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 the, the spec is very clear. Toe shall not. <laughs> Yeah, this might work. Uh, at which point, it's just a matter of taking our base64 encoding, which I think we even have. Uh, this one. Uh, 
Except, wait, no, that's not how it works. Base64.new encoder. Uh, yeah, and has no buffers. I'm very happy about this. Um, which takes the encoder and the destination writer. Why does it return an error? It doesn't. And here we simply Alright, fine, let's give this a name. But I liked being clever. Are you telling me it's this? Does it have to be a right closer? Ah, I'm losing track. Uh, what are we passing here? This is the outer layer, so we don't need closer here. Oh, 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 oh okay. Um, um, okay. Right. Um, Right, so this is completely useless to have a close here because it will never get called by this. Um, yeah, I was really hoping it would be like just like this, but like, ugh, sigh, fine, no. Um, no fun. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, so this does not need to be a right closer. This can be a writer. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's the... I'm not drinking coffee at 8 p.m. I could drink mate though. Hmm. Yeah, let's get this done uh, in encoding and then I'll, I don't know, get some uh, sustenance before doing the parsing. Uh, what was I looking up? I completely slipped. Oh boy. I was going to look up uh, how handler funk names things uh, cool
this doesn't work, does it? Why doesn't it? Wait, why doesn't it work? I'm getting very tired, but I thought this would work. Um, Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, I was hoping for some uh, cleverness here, but yeah, I need to call the base 64. Oh, also what I was trying to do here, which is not going to work, but what I was trying to do here was this, um, uh, and this would work. It's simply like the, the wrong, it does the wrong thing, but it, it would work. Um, actually we can salvage this. Here we just write straight to dest, right? Right, because we just closed the other one. New line, because we are guaranteed that this will never end with writing a new line. Um, because len p is always more than zero by the time we uh, uh, we hit here and um, there's always remaining uh, stuff by the time uh, yeah Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely sold that close closer propagation should be there when the thing takes a right closer. Like if you're wrapping a right closer, then you are essentially saying that you will call the closer. And that's cool with me. Okay. Um no oh, shit, I wanted to go climbing today. Maybe that's not happening. It's 8 p.m. It's open another four hours. Yeah, I'll probably get to climbing. Now, uh, this should work. I feel like I should write a test for it or I will regret it, but oh, uh what's the size fifty six uh we could write a One that does steps off eight fifty six and 
10. So we hit them all and try multiple sizes. Yeah, sure. I'll add a to do. Hey, we, we got to put it together and see it work. Love the name, but not now. Knob closer is a reader, god damn it. Well, the idea is still good, so still. Well, but now we need again closer function, uh, which at this point might as well stick in here. <laughs> oh, because it's a function. <laughs> um well now the problem is not much that it will propagate but that 
it requires The name still sucks, but at least now it says Final Destination, which feels much more hardcore, okay? <laughs> um, this might be it. Yeah, I think that this is all there is to it. Now we wire it into Common Dagger. Uh, this is one of the things I find most annoying of God. Yeah, there is no way around it, is there? I like this a little better than defining uh, error in the in a wider scope, just a little. I guess the alternative is, how bad is this? Yeah, I uh, the, the alternative, because we have to either use colon equal, or if we do this, error is not valid, so yeah. This still hurts my eyes, so you know what?
Mm. I'm actually very satisfied. All right, let's run it. Do we even have a key? Uh, key.txt, there we go, so. I don't know how to use my own software. Well, if we don't pass the argument though, I can't even blame myself. Is that 56? I have questions. Uh, didn't we say 56 columns? Yes. This does not look like 56. Yeah, this is 42. Is it 56 bytes of input? Probably. I mean, that's the only failure mode I can think of, but I thought we did not do that wrong. But then, like new line, new line uh, writer gets written base sixty four to it, right? Oh, I'm using bytes per line, which is forty two. Yes, duh. Um, didn't test that, yep. I have been bitten before by the fact that the coded Lando Okay, so if it's unpadded it will return. Okay. Nah, yeah, sure, whatever. Ah, okay, not worth it. Now the names should be a little self-explanatory.
I am now sure I'm a fan of the triple star, but it's way too late. Uh, for that. Um, Dimitri mentioned there's this pattern to consider. Yeah, it's just that I hate this. It's better than putting it outside, you're right, but yeah. Alright, we have encoding, and we have the first agate armored file generated by the Go implementation. Isn't it much more beautiful than a PGP armored file? There, a little more, more even. <laughs> Maybe this should have said something like end of file. Is Trad going to murder me if I change it? <laughs> A base sixty four encoding of UF. No. <laughs> People in the chat, what do you think? Star, 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 or star, 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 end of file, star, star, star? <laughs> Stop. Right, it's easier to see when you're trying to find where to copy paste, right? Like I'm trying to... Um, no, we can't use uh, dash dash dash. I, I suppose if we add something, we could use dash dash dash. Because just like we have to consider dash 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 here, there's the fact that dash 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 space is not um, ambiguous. Yeah, I like it better. Now, Strad is definitely going to murder me. But yeah, look at that. Looks better. Or maybe even... Hmm. Um, oh, um, from the chat, why there is no new line after uh, the first dash dash dash? 
um, because this one is the um, HMAC of the header. It's not part of the payload. Like this is all header. Uh, it does not need any more look ahead than this because you can just every line uh, you will look for at the first first four bytes, and if there are dash 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 space, then you fell off a cliff. Like that's it's the end. I mean, or even just check for the entire thing every line. And I don't think there is any other way because, sure, you can rely on the fact that your base64 decoder will return an error, but that sounds dirty. Also, I want people to actually check that uh, things break at, fi at 56 lines. So this is painful no matter what, but might as well. Oh, and while we're finishing encoding, before I get some food, uh, we have basically just in our implementation here. Of the same thing. It just uses a bunch of encode to strings instead. Oh, what the reason for 56? Uh, that it's a little shorter than the header. No other reason. Yeah, and I agree. This looks like cut here. Um, uh, trying to make sense of this code. I wrote it, so I really should... Um, Yeah, this is basically a re-implementation of that. So for example, let's, to test it, let's, um, oh yeah, let's use emoji. Okay, let's see if we can rip out that and replace it with new line writer. Do we even support bodyless? Nah, so it should just be a matter of
Hmm. That didn't work. Uh, we need a new line. Oh, we need a new line after the close, don't we? How do we handle it here? Yeah, yeah. Fine. There. Yeah, I really need to test New Line Writer now. I agree. Uh, maybe. Maybe it would be more convenient if it always. ended up um, oh we can't have um, you know writer dot close because who would call it new encoder wouldn't call it I mean we, I guess we could hoist it out but that's we're not gaining anything there um, There we go. Um, the reason I give for not using syntax highlighting, aside from the fact that once you get used to not having it, it's fine and you don't go seek it everywhere and it's easier, um, is that if your code is not readable without syntax highlighting, then maybe your code should be simpler. Okay. I still want to get parsing done. It's almost 9 p.m. I want to leave for the gym by, what, 10? It closes at uh, midnight. Um, I also need to pack. something um, let's say Too bad.
Why, yes, of course, I'm cooking pasta. I'm Italian. I fit the stereotype. No, Dominic, no! Everybody! Everyone thinks I'm French. Everyone thinks I'm French. Sigh. Hmm, am I a cryptographer first or a programmer first? That's some, like, identity crisis kind of question there. Um, I don't know. I think the description that fits best is that I'm a cryptography engineer. I design cryptography for the real world or I take designed cryptography and then implement it in code. And I care about API, safe APIs as much as safe uh, primitives. And I care about clean code as much as um, clean protocols. Um, I sit a bit at the crossroad uh, and I feel like I do as little general programming as I do theoretical cryptography which is to say kind of little uh, I guess the other day I wrote a program to upload files to my remarkable yeah and I write programs to archive stuff um, I definitely have opinions about go in general beyond security but i also have opinions about cryptography beyond implementing it so um. Waiting for the water to boil. Folks, if you have questions, this is the right time for them.
Ooh, you know what? Um, Um, I made a Google group for um, Aga development and I haven't announced it yet because I didn't want to announce it while it's empty. Uh, but how about... Um, I switch to webcam only so that I can open my... Um, email without making some terrible mistake and let's send an email to announce uh, a ski armored format Uh, the purpose of the Google group is just to have discussions about things that are not implementation issues in the Go code base, uh, be it how should we do private keys, uh, the encrypted private keys, and uh, here's a new project that uses Age, and hey, can, can we use Age for this, or here's some feedback on Age in general, or the spec or discussing the spec, like all things that were opened as issues in the Go repo, which doesn't really feel like it fits. So we can just do it the old, old style. I'm realizing that I'm showing you my I'm showing the world my uh, labels uh, in my mailbox. That might not be great, but I don't think there's anything particularly uh, worrying in here. Yes, I keep a folder for off recruiters. I find that kind of amusing. Uh, oh no, and. Yeah, GDPR actually were all the emails that they sent when the GDPR went in, um, in force. Um, yes, PGP messages, where is it? Uh, yeah, um, I wanted, it's out, out of search. Uh, I meant to go back and decrypt them all and save them somewhere uh, before uh, destroying my keys and I never did that. I keep the recruiters folder because sometimes somebody asks me if I know of any open jobs for something or something else. And if they're not, they were not terrible, I go back and pick them up. Hmm. How does one link to... No, no, didn't mean that. Um... This might work. Uh, due to the need for the header, um, you can't share 
you can stream a nugget file in the sense that you could start midstream and decrypt from there. Well, you can read the header, reach the end of the header, header, and then from there you can jump midstream and decrypt from there. So you can seek, but you can't literally start in a random spot. <laughs> well, Um, you can send the header and then start with a different position of the payload. Uh, well, you would have to build your own metadata messaging system, but you could send a JSON that has like the counter of the start position. So yes, the, the format lets you do that. You will have to put some effort in to actually spec around it. Yeah, for example, you could totally uh, HTTP range through a um, uh, AGE file. Um, you could just read the header f with the first range and then jump at the end and do ranges uh, at the end. That'd be cool, actually. Um, you can do stuff like the stuff Brad does uh, with um, a seekable tars um, and stuff like that. No. Power is too smart.
Okay. Before the pasta is ready. Uh, what do we need to do for... Uh, uh, what do we need to do for parsing? We need to go into the format parser and automatically ignore just every time we read a line uh, read it either ending with CRLF or LF um, and everything else should just work because then the marshalling will generate it with new lines and that's what we signed uh, and then to test it we'll just take our message change or everything into CRLFs and see if it parses yet uh, if it still parses so as long as we just tolerate CRLFs there we're done Oh, and now, then we need to parse the base64 encoding. Uh, so for the header, we need to switch based on the intro and switch to accepting both Sierra and LF. And for the other, and then we need to wrap the reader like we wrapped the writer All right, not a trivial amount of work but uh, should be doable I'm gonna switch you folks to webcam only and check twitter I've been getting a lot of uh, controversial opinions about cryptography uh, following that uh, tweet. They are still coming. I love that a lot of them are... Um, th there's a lot of pairs of people saying, uh, for example, provable security is a myth or everything should have a, um, a proof. Uh, and. Um, we need more post-quantum cryptography or um, uh, post-quantum cryptography is overrated. Uh, every, I think every opinion uh, has its opposite. There's plenty of PGP is actually good and PGP is bad. And like, also, don't you know my shtick at this point? Um, using the random oracle model is cheating and the random oracle model is fine. Like, <laughs> Writing your own is fine, uh, r um, writing your own is dangerous. And honestly, the truth is in the middle there. Uh, but yes. Wow, there's a lot. Hash functions don't exist, prove me wrong. Okay, the rest of this stream will be me reading controversial opinions from Twitter. Nope, kidding. Pasta's ready.
PGP is still the best email encryption solution. Mm, that I don't even think that's true. Like the mime encryption thing is decent. Mm. Here's one I support. The field would do just fine if the abusive people and their enablers got kicked out. Preach. All these people that we treat as if their contribution was so important that the field would crumble without them. And so we let we cut them slack. It's bullshit. Oracle functions are arrogant. I don't get it. I got to the end, these are bad. <clears throat> anyway. I'm actually thinking that even with food I would not have the brain power to do the, the parsing. Um, question from chat if um, AG is just for encryption or it can be used for signing. Uh, AG is just encryption. Um, what I'm used to say about uh, signing is uh, that si signify and mini sign have that already covered but these days i i'm extremely uh, look, uh, looking forward to um, the ssh signing uh, tooling so yeah um, i expect you'll be able to use ssh Gen, which was a weird choice of command to roll that into, but uh, <clears throat> you'll be able to assign things. And if you need to use the same key for signing an agate, well, agate supports um, SSH keys. I need to write a newsletter about it because nobody knows about it yet. I mean, it's in the release notes, but nobody made noise about it. Let's at least go through what 
code needs to change here. Uh, we go into the crypt. Um, parse itself returns a reader that begins at the start of the payload. Now, should it be the responsibility of the caller to then think about uh, Yeah, probably. Just like Encrypt knows about uh, armoring, so should Decrypt. So this should change into something that either does read bytes with a new line or uh, with a um, CRLF. Actually, I'd like the suggestion that maybe we just support either CRLF or LF. And based on the first line, which we know where to look, it's either um, this is a file, new line, this is an armored file, uh, CRLF, or this is an armored file, LF. And based on that, we decide which one to use going forward. Except, <clears throat> except read bytes takes a single byte as a delimiter and not a string. Read line. Um. Maybe we can use read line instead, but I kind of don't want to choose based on uh, Yeah, I mean, the first line is easy. We just use a uh, read string mm, with new line here. And then we switch. That's right. Let's write some code. You folks were kind enough to stick around. So I will use a little bit more code at least. And here we can start by already setting uh, where are we defining age? <clears throat> so here and here we set age dot armor to true. And here we probably also set something that makes us look for C uh, CRLF for the rest. Just that I don't know which function to use to abstract that. Wait, this is the only call? Okay, this is kind of easy actually. Uh, how should we treat a free floating line feed? 
when we are in Sierra Left mode. Actual question for anybody who um, did any of this. Why would we accept mixed? I mean, I guess it's easy. I thought it was more complicated, but actually, since I centralized the line reading here, and everything else here, we can then hand off to whatever body reader. What's a text transformer? Ooh. You know I never saw this. Interesting. Eh, we might get away with something is even simpler. I don't really want to bring runes into this We're just going to accept mixed, which I'm not sure why we are. No, wait, why Why would we? What happened to that file? What happened to that poor file? No way. Um, yeah, that's not. Um... Yeah, okay. Cool. up to and including the delimiter and then there's a bunch of trim suffixes mm. what happens if there is a CR and we are not stripping it. Uh, it's gonna fail otherwise. <clears throat> yeah, so we can just handle the CRLF case.
Are we allowed to change the returning the return the buffer of read bytes? Yep, it's a whole new buffer. That feels dirty. Also, that feels very inefficient. But I guess the point of Buffio is to save you uh, syscalls, which are expensive as hell compared even to our locations. So, cool. gonna get this wrong This may actually do the trick. Well, one way to, to, uh, to test that. Um. Why did I pick the damn RSA file? Wait, this is not gonna work because the header has to change. Actually, it's good that this wouldn't work, that I can't just go hex edit an existing file and it keep working. Um, <clears throat> What's the tool for uh, 
dash e what what no unix to dust Nice! It's working! We haven't done the payload yet, but the the header has passed, otherwise it wouldn't have reached the crypt in the input. I'm not sure how happy I am with the common line. Like Decryption takes file names while encryption takes names. That will be solved when encryption will also take file names, I suppose. Um, which is something I need to implement next. Yeah, recipient files. Let's make sure it's on the to do. Uh, Okay, we're so close. Uh, final stretch. We need to just get the body reading through. And it needs to be a reader wrapper because it needs to then be fed to... Um, stream this will require uh, them buffer isn't it we read the line put it into the buffer read it into whatever it is and rinse and repeat Yeah. Yeah. And if we find the end of line line, cool. If we find an error, that's the error. All right, I guess I've, run, I've written a hundred of these. That's right, a hundred and one.
This will be slow, but I would rather it be simple first. Are we making just yet another buffet? This one has to read until the end anyway, so we might as well. Okay, so now we have a line. First we check if it's the end of file marker. And this is one way things can end. Uh, the line before was uh, a full line and then there's the end of line uh, marker. Otherwise need, this needs to this line needs to decode uh, correctly. the code string here though ah but we have to no no but we just checked that eh 
There might be a slash R that we're ignoring. Uh, why is base 64 strict still? Uh, This will be the most inefficient implementation ever. Right now we should have removed all sources of uh, malleability. So now we can do This work except it will let lines be short when they're not the last line. Also, every time we return an error, we need to set wr, the uh, r.r, which is a pain. But I can't think of any other. This is horrible. I'm extremely unproud of this code instead. Um.
we need to save the EOF when that happens, but know that we might get a bunch of read calls before we can return that EOF because we need to flush the buffer first. So here first we flush and read and then we return the sticky error. And here we read an extra line. This might work. So this is a standard pattern of flushing the buffer and then returning a sticky error, putting a sticky EOF when we find that the thing is correct after we filled the, the buffer uh, so that, that then this is gated and it will, will never escape that. Uh, this might work, now we find out. At this point, I'm very tired. So let's try it. Ah, we don't know whether to expect CRLF from out here. Ah. So 
So maybe format.parse does the wrapping for us. Seems kind of ugly because encrypt has to know about armoring while the crypt doesn't. Seems wrong. But I suspect that's how it is. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. But I don't want the header to have to set, know whether it's CRLF or not. Because it's not part of the semantic of the header. The value of the header doesn't change. It's just how it's been parsed. For example, it's not necessary to re-serialize it in a way that matters. So it would be weird to know that it was made with CRLFs, but not marshal it with CRLFs. I don't like it. No, of all these crimes, I think that the best one would be to drop normalize CRLF here. And just support mixed ones in the body because eh, such is life. But this is a pretty nice way to slot it in. That's a weird error though.
So the file key is correct because we checked the header Mac and everything. So we're simply doing something wrong somewhere here, which yay. Anybody can see anything, this is a very useful time to tell me. It's gonna be such a hard bug to find, isn't it? Let's see if the first block of stream is working or not even that. Not even the first block. Okay. Then let's try hex printing it. Let's check first that the nonce is correct. It's also possible that our encoding is wrong, right? Although that was kind of easier. But we didn't test it. Well, but it works for these, so it seems hard it would be all completely broken.
1982 B5 DD. That sounds correct. And that's 16 bytes. And then here we have, this is not the right amount of bytes, right? Isn't it supposed to be 32 bytes, but 32 bytes? No, maybe not. Oh, it's just a single giant block because our chunks are 65k, right. Okay. Uh, then let's just print what's getting decrypted. It's a short read. It stopped after the first line. It didn't read the second line. Why? This one doesn't read full, so that doesn't make sense. Why did we hit a EOF? sooner than we should have. Okay, we know what's wrong. Uh, we are stopping surfacing bytes at the first If we returned uh, an error that is not EOF, everything would come crumbling down, right? Oh. Huh, there isn't a new line at the end of this. I wonder if that's what's throwing it off. But it shouldn't.
Oh. The problem is that some error is not getting propagated. What does read fool do? That's not where the error must have been getting lost. This error is getting lost somewhere though. So it is getting an unexpected UF. Just how? What? This is directly that there's no old, no other layer of wrapping, right? You know. Yeah. So this is a armored reader. And the armored reader is returning UF? That makes no sense. As in, literally, does not make sense at this point. Oh, one of these reads are is returning that, I guess. I am definitely going to leave behind one of these printfs, like when surgeons leave behind uh, pieces inside uh, the patient. Yep, all right. Something here is re reaching a UF. And it's this one because, no, it's this one. Bet you that it's this one. Because there isn't a new line Yeah, uh, this one's sitting um, UF because there's not a new line and yeah, 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 okay. Well, but now it's getting caught by the other thing, so... Uh, by the fact that we... Confuse this for the unexpected EOF of the... Other thing, so let's just invalid input it. And now we should see invalid input, yes. Finally surface. Okay. 
ridiculously enough, the issue was in the input file. why I like set air functions is that you can panic in them. Uh, because we're not stripping the uh, the This is spaghetti code, but I'm too tired to improve it at this point. Done. <sighs> done, 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 done. Alright, the armored reader is not my proudest code, but at least it's self-contained. It really didn't sp spread around the implementation. Actually, I'm very proud of how little interventions it needed, like the switch here on the intro, normalizing line reading here, and then just wrapping with the armored reader here and that's it ship it ship it 
email.